presentation. So here is the first case in the afternoon session. A middle-aged lady with a CBD stricture presented in 2016 in regional hospital with a swollen pancreas on PET CT scan. And bowel biopsy was negative for IgG4 positive cells. She was treated as autoimmune pancreatitis due to an elevated serum IgG4 level. And subsequent IgG4 level was normalized, but then looked at persistent distal CBD stricture requiring repeated stand exchange. EUS recently showed a pancreatic head homogeneous ISO enhancement with no mass at the pancreatic head or distal CBD. Here are the CT and ERCP images. So today we are going to have ERCP and fully covered SAMS. Oh. Great. Welcome. Uh, I'm here with uh, the big, great Dr. Rob Hawes, my idol. And he's just making me nervous looking over my shoulder. So uh, this patient had uh, autoimmune pancreatitis, uh, responded to the steroid, and uh, repeatedly the there is a demonstration of uh, distal bowel stricture with the proximal dilation. Once the stent, plastic stent was placed, um, the LFDs, all liver enzymes uh, went down to normal. Patient was uh, asymptomatic, uh, but uh, stricture remains. So uh, there's a consideration of uh, more robust uh, therapy, and we can have some discussion about that. But today, uh, there was a uh, temperance stent placed, and um, I removed it already. And uh, somehow, she has this uh, little bit distorted duodenal anatomy. So for the cannulation, I have to make a little J shape to face the papilla. And once the, the alignment to the bowel duct is uh, straight, then uh, we cannulate it, and the uh, wire is extended. Uh, it's the wire uh, is right now in the left intrahepatics. Um, so I haven't seen the cholangiogram yet, so let's do the cholangiogram. Could you mag ma uh, magnify the image? Ready? Inject contrast. Noyo, this is Uzma. Uh, yep. is the patient is off steroids now? It's off steroids. Uh, they're, they're off steroids now, Uzma. Uh, she's responded well. The, the, the pancreas has shrunk. Uh, clinically, she's doing well. Uh, it's just there's this persistent fibrotic stricture. Uh, uh, we heard yesterday during the talk um, that actually to prevent relapse, uh, these patients should be on long-term, very low-dose steroids, but uh, the decision has been made to stop the steroids in this case. Thank you, Rob. So the, as you can see, the cholangiogram, there's a proximal uh, ductal dilation, and uh, in the distal part, I'm trying to bring the contrast down but the, um, there's somewhat irregular, or it's hard to see right now, uh, stenosis towards the end. This, this patient never had a cholecystectomy. I was waiting to see the cystic duct com coming off, and uh, uh, it looked like uh, it's just coming off from the mid extrahepatic bile duct. To identify this area, probably we should just rotate the C arm to see where exactly the uh, the cystic duct takeoff is because not right now we're considering whether we should go for multiple plastic stent placement for ongoing dilation or fully covered metal stent to keep it in for at least six months, three to six months, uh, to see if we it, it exert more uh, robust dilation effect. So could you rotate? I was going to pull the audience they prefer. How many would want multiple plastic stents? So the, if you are performing a multiple metal stent? Metal, uh, plastic stent, then uh, as many as you, you can place is uh, probably the best answer. Um, you can start with a three temperance stents with the dilation. Uh, I like the th three, more than three, no a number of more than three because two, there's a little flat uh, opening, if you put one uh, additional, making three, becomes a triangle. And if you keep uh, stenting, increase the diameter uh, of the, uh, the, uh, the bile duct. So if you dilate to 10, 10 millimeter, the actual diameter is 30 French. So you can uh, accommodate three stents, three 10 French easy, easily. 
And you can actually add probably two or three more if you persist on placing with additional uh, dilation. But it depends on how tight the stricture is. You don't want to overdo uh, dilation on the fibrotic stricture because if you open up too quickly, you can uh, actually cause perforation and cause leakage as well. So, just just to clarify, uh, just to clarify, Uzma, that this conversation was had with a patient, and okay. she was uh, wanting to avoid multiple ERCPs. So the the data suggests that the efficacy for multiple plastic and fully covered metal is the same. Uh, but the one difference is that it requires fewer ERCPs, and that was what the patient um, wanted really to wants. to do. But what Norio is is doing is very very important. Um, if we're going to use a fully covered uh, metal stent, which is what we've been asked to place, it's important for Norio to understand where that cystic duct takes off. And I think if it takes off right at the top of that stricture then I'm going to be a little bit reluctant, Norio, to um, recommend metal a stand. metal stent. So we're trying to rotate. Uh, I can see some of the, the uh, I can see the, the cystic duct a little bit better, but I'm not sure I see exactly where it's taking off. Yeah, probably it's taking off right around there on the right side. Right around there on the right side. Yeah. So can we rotate more um, just to... Oh, watch out. Could you move the table? <laughs> so if you uh, take the spot film, you can see a little, probably it's a little higher. I can Is bring it above the scope, do you think? Yeah, uh, I think above the scope. Like a little That's defect, side, maybe an inch It's around above. there, probably. Say again, uh, Uzma? I, it looks like perhaps it's about an inch and a half, maybe above. There's a small little defect, filling defect so there. Yeah, there's a little off. irregularity, and probably around that area, maybe a little bit above, is the cystic duct takeoff. Okay, yeah, I agree. Yep. Like you so yeah. Uzma, you can't, use, you can't use inches in information, but that doesn't affect my decision about what kind of, or what method of stenting. Thank you, I'm out. Oh. So we're gonna, um, we've got to ask for a balloon. So do you have the x-ray? You can see the cholangiogram. The, the still image? Yeah, you, you're seeing the occlusive cholangiogram. Yeah. You see the tightness in the distal duct is, is not as bad as we, we expected. Uh, we did several sweeps, and uh, actually 12 millimeter balloon swept down uh, without much resistance. You have to just give a little more um, force, but uh, it actually come through. Um, once I situated the balloon, at the distal end and injected, you can see the, the probably bowel duct stricture is about 12, 30 millimeter. Um, and the diameter itself, and the length is 12, 30 millimeter. Diameter is probably four, five millimeter on this cholangiogram, which is uh, more than adequate. So the question is, it's going to shut down or stay open. So we're debating. She, she has a good control of the uh, autoimmune pancreatitis right now. She's asymptomatic. IG, IgG4 is normalized. So we're debating that probably we don't need to restent it, give her a stent-free trial, and she see sent, if she's she going to... Sorry, for ERCP, because they said her LFTs were, were elevated? No, no more. Nor normal, with a stent in. Oh. Just the biliary dilatation. She never had a stent-free trial. That, that was the main concern. And this uh, diameter was the, pro, uh, the best um, they have seen so far. It was tighter. Before? So what would you say, Uzma? Was there a spinterotomy from, from before? done before? It was much tighter so before. What was the so Ra Raymond uh, has followed this patient and, um, and, and he says that the, the stricture has been tighter before when they've done stent exchanges. So um, at some point you have to, to give them a stent free trial. Uh, there's inevitably edema of the bile duct wall after you take out a stent which we expect to recede. Um, but it, it seems appropriate, given everything that we see here, uh, to give her a, a, a trial of, of stent-free. 
we've just made sure, at least I've questioned uh, Raymond and the team, just to make sure that she can be followed carefully. Uh, you can see bile flowing from the uh, from the bile duct now pretty freely. It's just you got to follow these patients carefully, and uh, if there's an upturn of the alkaline phosphatase, uh, then they need to be brought back uh, right away. Can we see another fluoro image really quickly? Obviously, it looks like she's draining very well. So the, uh, if we were to place a stent, uh, I tend to agree that probably uh, four centimeters is adequate now. It's because it's straight configuration. Um, so the, the uh, trauma from the proximal end probably is, is less likely. Um, and uh, this foreshortening is about 33% with this woven stent. And if you place uh, six centimeter, initially starts out with close to uh, 10 centimeter and it's shortened. Uh, so that's what we have been discussing. If we place a 10 millimeter, six centimeter stent, it's, it appears to be probably really long and maybe covering cystic duct. And the other consideration when you're putting in a fully covered stent for a stricture is you would like that stricture to be in the, in the center of the stent. Okay, let's and uh, in patient. this particular case, if you put in a six, uh, it's patient. gonna be clearly at the upper part of the stent and I think there is a, a greater chance of migration uh, if there's a, a considerable um, sort of uh, asymmetry to the uh, stricture compared to the uh, middle of the stent. So since, uh, so we're not placing a stent. I think it's reasonable not to stent. No, I, I think is the it panel agree? agrees with you as well. Okay, good. So l let me just show you uh, what I like to do for measurement of the length. Uh, since we have this uh, nice configuration with the catheter, uh, rather than pulling the catheter back, it can give you a false length. Um, I tend to ask for assistance, uh, give me attention. And uh, uh, first uh, you place the catheter above where you want to measure. So and then you pull back the wire. To the tip of the... Exactly, where you want to measure from. To, to where you want the proximal stent to be. Yep. So that's a, let's see. A little bit further out. Okay, push in a little more. Stop, come back. Stop, that's a, that, that's a starting point. And can you show uh, this hand? So what you're gonna do is just pinch this side and pull back to see, until you see the end of the wire, see? On the endoscopic view, you can see the end of the, the wire, and you push it back to where you want to situate. So that's the length, actually, you can measure. Oh, thank you. So it turned out to be four centimeter. <laughs> 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 so it's always the Rob is right. Any questions? No, I think nope. Are you still awake, uh, Uzma, or no? <laughs> I am, I am. <laughs> okay. Do you need coffee? But, but I agree. I think uh, not leaving a stent at this point, given what you, you just demonstrated in the cholangiogram, would be appropriate. But then when is the patient going to have follow-up labs again? It's our... She, she's an inpatient. Uh, you know, getting labs right away is a little bit too early. Right. Uh, what I generally do is, is have them get... Uh, a, a liver panel every two weeks, uh, uh, and uh, and if there's any upturn from the nadir, then uh, then uh, then I see them back. Right. Uh, Rob, do you think a simple balloon dilatation or a, a balloon sphincteroplasty would be an option in this patient? You mean structure dilation? It's yeah. it's always an option. Of course, it's an option. We've talked about Let's it. Pass the um, Let's pass and the um, I, I advance the wire. I don't know. I, I don't have any experience. Uh, Advance. Both Norio and I uh, both agreed that if we were going to place a metal stent, that we didn't want to dilate before we place the metal stent. And we also both agreed that if you deploy a fully Advance. covered metal stent and it's still very, very tight, then we'll, we'll dilate after the stent is in position. But just to uh, sort of treat this like um, a sclerosing cholangitis and just do a 
balloon dilation before we pull out. Um, I, I, I have no data. I don't have any strong feelings one way or the other. Right, right. I agree that sounds like a fabulous plan. So uh, thank you very much. We're very, very good. Uh, thank, you so much. Much. thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.